Good day, everyone. Um, thank you for joining on and um, most especially searching and identifying this video. We will not proceed without saying a huge thanks to the reactions, the comments, the the likes, um, subscriptions to the channel, showing the 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 the, the interest in this um in this occupation. Um, today we will be discussing on the fundamentals of subsidiary in operation. On the last um, presentation, we discussed on execution, the execution of a, of land operations. Um, here we will be delving straight into subsidy operations, and um, this is going to be a huge, um, a huge series because we'll be talking on. Um, everything with regards to subsidy operations from 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 rig selection to how we'll be drilling wells from these different um mobile offshore drilling units that is from jacob operate i mean talking on jacob operations swamp operations drilling wells from semi-submersible rigs drilling wells from um, um drill ships we'll not just be talking about ex execution of wells from 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 this um, drilling units, we'll, we'll also be talking about um, the modus operandi. We'll also be talking about the different risks associated to drilling wells from this um, from these units. And moving straight into the presentation, on this first series, we'll be sp we'll be running straight from the introduction, talking about different historical developments that 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 we've seen um, in offshore operations. I mean, pretty much some of them happened before I was born. Um, we'll be talking about rock cycle, how um, oil was formed. We'll be talking about hydrocarbon offshore prospecting and um, cost associated to developing some of these assets. Then we'll be jumping to the technical and economic challenges, discussing them, how this, how 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 difficult it is to develop wells in in these terrains. So, just some of the history so that we understand. Where we are coming from and where we are currently. In 1949, we see that we had the first um, offshore submersible rig. In 1950, a year later, we had the first drill ship. Um, I guess that I guess that why was that was a little bit easy because I mean it's pretty much I I see it being easy to convert a ship to a drilling unit. I mean just pretty much erecting a derrick somewhere and creating a moon pool. Um, 1954, we had the first Jacob. 1958 to 62, we had the first submersibles. Um, 71 had the first um, dynamic positioning rig, and as we speak, we currently have over 800 units, over 800 units available drilling wells offshore. So this has this is to tell you how how far we've gone, how far we've, we've taken it very serious, prospecting oil from onshore wells to where uh, to I mean to drilling offshore currently. So moving straight into the rock cycle, before we talk about how we select rigs, we need to understand how we find oil or how pretty much how this oil is formed. Um, moving to the left, I'll just move to the left straight and describe it. What you see on the left is pretty much what we have on the right. We have three types of rock, basically, the igneous, the metamorphic, and the sedimentary rocks. The igneous rocks, I would say, are like the mother of all rocks. They are formed from molten magma. When molten magma is cooled, we have the igneous rocks. When they melt, we have molten magma. Then when we have some weathering and erosion to create sediments, and those sediments compact and with some cementation, we have the sedimentary rock. When they erode, we have this, it forms the sedimentary rocks. But at the same time, when we have some heat and pressure on the sedimentary rocks, we have the metamorphic rocks. And when some weathering and erosion occur, we have sediments, which go up, which in turn form sedimentary rocks. So we can say, because in this presentation, I'm just making it clear, what we are interested in is the sedimentary rocks. I'll just cut to the chase, because sedimentary rocks are pretty much where we find oil and um, where hydrocarbons are deposited. So I would love the metamorphic rocks to weather and erode, create sediments so that I can have my sedimentary rocks. Then I would like the igneous rocks to also weather and erode to create sediments 
so that I can have, so that it can compact, have some cementation, then I can have my sedimentary rocks. So that's pretty much what the diagram to the left also, I mean, also speaks. So um, moving straight into the next slide. After these rocks, uh, whether they, I mean, they erode, they sediment, they form hydrocarbons, how do we find them? Where do we find these hydrocarbons? So first of all, in the first in the sequence, we have, a, we have what we call the magnetic and gravimetric surveys, where we have flights go around to check, fly around those environments where our geologists have kind of confirmed where we might find oil. Now, where we find very dense rock or rock that has some magnetic properties, ladies and gentlemen, you will not find hydrocarbons in that environment. But where you have where you don't have um, a lot of gravity and where the it isn't dense we don't have any magnetic effect on that environment ladies and gentlemen you have yourselves a reservoir or you have yourselves a place where we have sedimentary rocks formed after that is done you have your seismic surveys your seismic surveys is where um from seismic um operations you can actually almost 50 percent decipher that in these areas you have some sort of deposition. So what happens here? You have you send sound waves with compressed um, gas, and iso I mean sound waves isochrones. It goes down, reflects back upwards, um, and um, pretty much form isobaths. So from those iso from those isochrones, you know at what depth, you know at what regions where you might where you will find hydrocarbons. From this diagram, it's easy to see that when you have a rock. The reflected waves move faster when you have oil and gas the reflected waves move slower for obvious reasons rocks are more compacted so we reflect the sounds quicker to the hydrophones and when you get those um that information we can actually decipher and say okay this is where we want to prospect this is where we have the shows this is where we should be drilling then of course after all that study has been done that information is passed to the drill engineers like us. Then we go ahead and um, determine the required the type of rig to move into that environment, drill the wells, and get the hydrocarbons on surface. So when we drill this, when we do all these surveys, moving from the left, that's the result that you get from the magnetic and gravimetric surface um, surveys. You see the 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 the, the skew formed by by magnetism. And immediately you see this, it tells you that there's a body there. And definitely, ladies and gentlemen, you will not find any hydrocarbons there. For the seismic surveys, this is what you will find. There will clearly be faults. I mean, shows due to faults. There will be shows due to hydrocarbons. You get, you kind of see the structures, how things are formed, because the, the variance in reflection and refraction will be different. So you get to see it by the time they, they, they pick out the study and put it on the map for we the drill engineers all we're interested in is getting all to surface and when we get all to surface ladies and gentlemen this is all we're after to get money money in the bank um however there are issues with the offshore development cost in as much as it isn't so much with regards to seismic gravity and magnetic surveys um because i mean what the cost you will spend having to do seismic surveys, magnetic and um, gravimetric surveys, it isn't, I mean, the difference isn't so much when you do, when you do it on land and water. However, with, all, with regards to other operations, especially drilling operations, it's a lot. Because you are in water, there will be reduced fracture gradients. If you look at the graph to your far right, when I drill wells on land, the fracture gradient I have is really very very exciting because i can decide to drill over five six thousand feet in one go because i know that i have a fracture grain that is very forgiving in shallow in deep water i can't i can't do that because the the the, the depth of the water has reduced the compaction levels in that environment so i'll have to set more casing joints in place to be able to drill these wells the production costs are even worse length of risers you have to put in place them the the F, um, um flow lines that have to put in place formation of hydrate and wax 
it's a it's a it's, it's a whole lot that you have to um cost that you have to factor in please moving to the economic and technical challenges ladies and gentlemen they are a lot first of all safety you don't want to get people to help drill these wells get the well constructed then you end up getting some people injured and even having a fatality that's killing people you don't want to do that so whatever you're doing you have to ensure that the operation is safe you have to ensure that you curb every technical commercial and political risk and most especially you have to make sure that you look for you look for improved ways to reduce the cost of developing that field yes this cost will come but if you look for variant various ways i mean different technologies to reduce your time the time spent and associated cost in developing these fields you will reduce this cost and of course um if your capex reduces and um you have i mean you have um you have um inflow you have revenue and your cost is smaller your profit is goes your profit goes higher and trust me when you have this most of these technologies in place you have competent personnel you have a very planned procedure in place you don't injure people you have motivated a motivated personnel and um, group of people on board you will reduce the time to reach first oil which is pretty much what we're looking for and ladies and gentlemen most especially we spoke about it we know that the capex is on a high in deep water operations we want it to reduce by having by making sure we have efficient operations so um this is the first series of um talking about offshore operations we'll be moving into the next presentation talking about what kind of rig are we going to use in what kind of environment and what determines those rigs and how do we select them as said earlier it would be appreciated if you follow us on these different social media platforms like subscribe comment we will appreciate you and your questions are are required we want to keep making this um this platform as exciting as possible and be able to answer your questions it's not just about putting up slides on youtube but also to make sure that these slides are reaching out to people and answering questions that have left unanswered for a while thank you very much ladies and gentlemen bye for now